Um, so let's talk about dynamic metabolic control. Uh, when we've been talking about metabolic pathways so far, we have largely been focusing on static changes. Um, the idea that you're going to always upregulate a gene uh, or always downregulate it, or thinking about that slightly differently, that you're going to make a change such that the cell always has some higher or lower state of expression, or that it's permanently lost some uh, gene that isn't essential. So some non-essential enzyme that it can afford to lose permanently uh, that you've knocked out based on metabolic flux analysis. So you have that aspect. Um, we've been transitioning into all of these regulatory perspectives, both to shape what kind of additional knockouts we might want to make or other changes to the genome, um, but also why we might want to turn on a metabolic pathway later, uh, once the cell has had some time to grow and accumulate biomass. Now, recently, uh, we've also transitioned to this idea that you might want to, to time it uh, based on the presence of a molecule um, such that you, you then uh, have a particular action. And this biosensor concept, as we just talked about, um, is useful for thinking about enzyme engineering, strain engineering, and just monitoring concentration. Now we're going to bring some of these concepts together, as um, was pioneered largely in uh, Cristalla Prather's lab at MIT um, during the sort of um, mid-2010s. Um, so this idea that you might not just want to induce a pathway um, to turn on a pathway at, at some point once you've accumulated enough biomass, but you might in fact want to perform other kinds of dynamic um, metabolic control aspects. And, and actually to, to acknowledge the literature a little bit more broadly here, I think some of these concepts were shown um, also earlier by uh, James Liao from UCLA in the Jay Kiesling's lab at UC Berkeley, um, there were some examples of, of taking natural pathways and regulatory mechanisms that, that turn on and off um, and, and applying that concept to metabolic engineering. The examples I'm going to show you today come from the Prather lab as that's where I did my PhD work and so I'm a little bit more familiar. But I think they take us through um, some neat examples of different ways to connect uh, different styles of regulatory mechanisms and, and thinking about targets. So shown here on the screen is just your, your normal um, glycolytic pathway and uh, boxed in red is GLK glucokinase, um, which uh, phosphorylates um, glucose uh, and, and uh, creates G6P. And we've talked about how um, you know, if glucose is brought in to the cell via the PTS system, then it's automatically phosphorylated, but you can have a, an entry mechanism for glucose that's independent of that and then have GLK perform this action. Now, something we haven't talked about is imagine a hypothetical where you have a metabolic pathway where you, where you, you start with glucose, but you don't actually want it to go through glycolysis. You just have uh, you've introduced a gene that um, takes glucose and, and redirects it somewhere else. So you don't want it to become G6P. And as we'll see in the next slide, G6P, once it's, it's made, can go to a number of different places. And there's quite a strong pull for it to go um, through glycolysis. Um, so you can imagine that uh, the cell wants it to go through glycolysis. And so you want GLK activity as you are maybe accumulating biomass, and then maybe you want to switch. Um, you've built up enough cells, uh, now they can overproduce this other pathway. And if you just do that alone, you've got competition. But if you do that uh, in conjunction with turning off the or lowering the rate of glycolysis, um, then you've got uh, uh, potentially uh, a much higher ability to make your product of interest. So one way to do that, by coupling a few different transcription factors and, and some synthetic biology concepts, is to essentially use an inverter. Um, and so the idea of an inverter is that you have, um, under probably constitutive expression, some kind of repressor, and the repressor represses 
the promoter for another oppressor. So in case that was a little confusing, which it probably was, I'll just take you a little bit more through what's happening in this diagram. You've got GLK, which is this protein here, um, under the control of a promoter that can be repressed by LAC I. Um, but you've got LAC I under the control of a promoter that can be repressed by TED R. And so when you don't have ATC around, the, the inducer for this inverter, then if you don't have ATC, TED R is being made, it's repressing LAC I. You're getting no LAC I expression, so you have GLK on. And so hopefully you can picture how that um, works together. And then how with the addition of ATC, now you're going to, uh, the TET R is allosterically going to bind this anhydro tetracycline and derepress LAC I, allowing transcription and formation of LAC I protein, which will then bind the promoter um, and repress GLK production. So in a nutshell, this is one strategy that can be used actually much more broadly, you can kind of swap out GLK with any gene of interest um, and, and get an inversion type of, of phenotype, um, which simply means this inversion idea is, you know, you're adding something and you're turning something off. Um, now, actually, um, the, the person who did this work in the Fraser Lab, Kevin Solomon, professor at Purdue, um, it initially tried a different strategy um, involving antisense RNA. You can also imagine that you could turn on uh, transcription of some RNA that's exactly complementary to your GLK gene. And then because RNA is single-stranded, you can get the antisense phenomenon where any RNA that's being made gets um, paired up with its other RNA, uh, thus creating a complex that's, that's unable to be translated. Um, so there are a few different ways that you could work. In this case, in this project, um, the inverter seemed to work better. And what you can see here in this plot is just that, um, how uh, as a function of ATC here on the x-axis, as you go across different logs, um, you, you've got um, uh, GLK activity um, on, on the, on the y-axis, or at least one of your y-axes, and the other one you've got um, GLK mRNA, and I actually don't remember here from the legend whether the black dots go with the left and the triangles go with the right. I think that might be how it is. But in either case, you can see how the, um, the, the activity and mRNA expression go down um, as you increase your ATC concentration. So this was an idea that um, you know, worked in terms of actually modulating GLK. Um, it didn't necessarily result in the highest yields, but the um, Prather Lab took this further through several different iterations. Um, the, the next strategy actually noted the fact that, um, you know, when you turn something off, like in this case of GLK, you're preventing any new expression um, and any new translation from being made. But what you're not necessarily accounting for is the GLK protein that's already there. Um, and so if you are early in, in cell growth and division in your curve, uh, early exponential phase during exponential growth, uh, then you might only make so much protein that as the cells keep growing and dividing, uh, they essentially dilute out your protein of interest. But if you are later in that stage, you need something to eliminate the protein that you already have, or it's just there continuing to, to serve as an enzyme. Um, and so in addition to that tweak on, on the system, um, there was also an increased emphasis in this e example of looking at a particular pathway, um, the glucaric acid pathway. Glucaric acid is a commodity chemical um, platform in of interest to the Department of Energy. And one of its precursors is this myo-inositol molecule here. Um, and so here in this case, you actually, the pathway branches from uh, glucose 6-phosphate, which as I just mentioned, has all these other sources that it could go to. It could go to biomass. It's mostly going to go through glycolysis as we think of the actual um, levels of flux that are going through each of these routes. Um, and, and it can also enter the pentose phosphate pathway. Pentose phosphate pathway is really important. There are other ways to get there. So you could take a strain 
as was done um, by Irene Brockman, um, now Irene Brockman Riesman, also a professor at Rose Holman um, in Indiana. Um, you could imagine a, another uh, metabolic valve kind of strategy uh, where you look at something downstream of glucose 6-phosphate in glycolysis if you want to shut off glycolysis. But in order to do that, if you're going to have a valve, at least in this strategy, we wanted, they wanted to focus on one particular um, component. So then you can't have glucose 6-phosphate continuing to go to, at least in high quantities, to all these different sources. So um, one knockout that was made was this entry point into pentose phosphate and encoded by uh, ZWF here. Uh, another was this choice of, uh, related to this choice of, of which enzyme in glycolysis do you want to target? And um, the PGI protein here, which you might think of as your first rational thought, okay, it's just downstream of glucose 6-phosphate, why not pick it? Um, you know, in this case, it's reversible. And you can see that shown by these arrows right here. So you wouldn't want to choose generally um, a step that's reversible in terms of the amount of control that it might give you over flux. Um, having uh, the, the PFK enzyme here, even though it has two versions, so you know, requires the knockout of one, having your control point here be an irreversible um, reaction affords you more, more control over the pathway. And in this case, with the one PFK that you could have, um, the idea was, let's give it a degradation tag. A degradation tag that depends on the amount uh, or in induction of this SSPD um, protein. So there are many different degradation systems in all different forms of life, and that is something actually of interest to, to my lab still. Um, but rather than dive too deeply into that concept, the idea here is simply that you can append uh, you, your protein, as we covered a long time ago, you know, has its and terminus, it's C-terminus. And actually, there are certain set, small sets of amino acids that you can add at either end um, that make those proteins recognized um, by degradation machinery. So the cell will look at the protein and say, oh, this, this you know, maybe seems like a mistake, or this seems like a protein that's not supposed to be around for very long. It's just a signal on the um, protein itself, but it's post-translational regulation. Um, and so in this case, uh, you could have the PFKA gene expressed constitutively, which is interesting because it's, it's almost now the opposite of what we talked about before. Now you have this protein that's always being made, and at some point you're going you're gonna to turn on the ability um, by adding ATC uh, to have SSPB and degrade this PFKA. Um, but the problem is you still have some PFKA PFKA being made as you have this constituent promoter here. Ideally, you would you would regulate at both the um, transcription and uh, you you regulate both the new gene expression as well as something about the amount of enzyme that you still have. In any case, you can see that this um, technique also worked in terms of providing at least um, because of the um, central effect by des uh, design of these knockouts of the PFK one uh, protein encoded by PFKA, you can see that as you um, induced SSPB by ATC levels, um, you, you saw this rather sudden and sharp um, decrease in, in, uh, in growth rate. And, and this could be a situation where you, know, you might want this to be digital. Um, if you're thinking about a switch from growth to production, that's not necessarily something that you want to be steadily uh, decreasing only because also growth it, for cells is exponential. So it starts to pick up pretty sharply and you, there's probably a sweet spot that you want to target. It may be different sweet spots, but you probably want a switch um, going back to our, to our last discussion.